And Madam Treasurer, just to update you, it is still streaming through Zoom to Facebook and should be live any second. We should be live on Facebook now. Wonderful. Welcome everyone to Money Mondays with Melissa. We have a few quick housekeeping items to cover before we begin. The first of which is to let you know that we are recording today's event, which will be made available for viewing on demand. Everyone who registered to attend will receive an email with a link after the conclusion of today's town hall meeting. All participant lines are muted, so if you're having any technical issues, please use the chat feature to let us know and we will try to assist you. We encourage you to use the same chat feature to submit any questions or comments you have during today's presentation. You can submit your questions at any time. We'll collect them and try to address them as, as many as possible during the Q&A portion of the town hall. Any questions that we're unable to address will be shared with Treasurer Conyers Irving, whose staff will follow up with you by email. Madam Treasurer, I'll now turn it over to you. Thank you and welcome to Money Mondays with Melissa. Um, I am so excited about today's panel. I was just speaking with them before we went live. Our title today is Preparing Our Future Today. I like that. Youth Resources for a Path to Success. Now, as many of you know, we started Money Monday series this spring really when it was the height of the pandemic. Um, unfortunately, when COVID-19 hit, um, and, and lo and behold, this is our 10th Money Mondays um, webinar since then. So it's really been a great series. We received so much feedback from many residents that attend these Money Mondays with Melissa webinars. So thank you for joining us on today. And we know that for young people, things are particularly hard right now, many of whom are now in remote learning um, and really just unfortunately are not getting the full school experience as they normally would. We know that they are doing remote learning for safety. And so we certainly pray for our youth, our parents, um, as well as our teachers throughout, throughout this experience. And I know myself personally, I am a parent of a young daughter, so I certainly understand how difficult this situation is. Some days it feels impossible <laughs> for us as parents, for the teachers, and I know certainly for the youth. And so um, on today, we, we talk about opportunities. We know that our youth need opportunities. And fortunately, Chicago is home to some incredible programs that are providing guidance for young people and really setting them on a solid path for their future. Now I can speak from personal experience about the importance of college and the power of opportunity. I was just mentioning to the panel as well that this panel on tonight is very important to me anytime I get an opportunity to speak with young people because I am a young lady that was raised by a single mother and my mother worked so hard to raise her family and her hard work is the reason that I was inspired to do well in school, to go to college and to go on to pursue a life of public service. But she really didn't know how to advise me on choosing the right college or applying for scholarships. She did not have the experience. That's why I became a mentor as an adult. I wanted to provide young people with the kind of opportunity and guidance that I needed when I was young, younger, because I'm still young. <laughs> because there are so many young people out there who are just like I was, ambitious and eager to learn, but needing guidance to really navigate the system. Now, last year, Chicago had almost 2,000 low-income Black and Hispanic students with SAT scores in the top 25%, and nearly 500 with SAT scores in the top 10%. We need to increase those numbers and make sure that those students get the resources that they need to go far in life. So that's why we're here today. We have two great panels representing three assistance programs for youth. Both the leaders of those programs and some Chicago students 
who are benefiting from those programs are here with us on this evening. We have a lot of great information to share, so we are going to jump right in. Now, let me also mention, usually our Money Mondays with Melissa series is at 12 noon at the lunch hour. But on, this, on today, we have it at a special time because we wanted to make certain that not only the parents were on the call, but that our youth would be on the call, and we wanted to be considerate of the remote learning program. So parents, if you are listening right now, Please grab your youth, make sure that they listen in on this great panel for today because it is geared towards them and today is all about our young people. So first, please join me in welcoming Ms. Dominique Jordan-Turner, CEO of Chicago Scholars. We also have Steve Stein, CEO of Thrive Scholars. So we got Chicago Scholars and we have Thrive Scholars. And finally, please welcome Chris Broaden, Executive Director of Bottom Line. Thank you all for being here on today, this evening. And we'll jump right in with our first set of questions because I mentioned that we have three organizations. So I think it's befitting for you first to tell us about your organization. What's your mission? And how do you work to fulfill that mission? Let's start with you first, CEO Jordan Turner. Well, Madam Treasurer, thank you so much for having me. And as I mentioned on our pre-chat, I am so grateful that you made this scholar-centered. Oftentimes, I'm in panels and discussions where we're building programs for young people without their voice. And so it was very um, profound to have these young people at the table. And so thank you for that. Um, just like most of you guys on this call, I love Chicago. And what we know about this city is that there is talent in every corner of, of our great city. Um, but what we also know is that the unfortunate reality is that your zip code often determines your life outcomes. And we believe as Chicago scholars that that's just unjust, right? That, that we want to level the playing field. We want to help young people to live up to their fullest potential so they can become the next city treasurer. Um, and so that's what we do, but we get them to and through college and then back here to the city of Chicago to begin their careers as leaders. And I love to say that this is more than just philanthropy. This is economic development for our city when you invest in human capital and human potential and so over the past 25 years, we've served over 4,000 young people. 83% of them have graduated within six years. And now we're preparing this newest class of 525 high school students who are getting ready to go off to college. And we do this big event. And this last thing I'll share is that we host something called an on-site college and leadership forum. And before anybody else in the nation, these young people are interviewing with five of their top colleges. They're getting same day acceptances and scholarship offers all on that day. Last year, 1,400 offers of admission were given and $45 million in merit aid was awarded. And so that's just a reflection of the talent that's in our city. And with just a little bit of push and support and mentorship, these young people will become that next generation of leaders. Awesome, thank you. And CEO Stein of Thrive Scholars. Uh, thank you, Madam Treasurer. Um, you know, we're, we're the newbie here. We are, we're a national organization and we're just coming to Chicago right now. And the welcome we've gotten has been tremendous and we're very excited uh, to work with a lot of the organizations up here and especially the youth of Chicago. I actually personally am from Chicago, uh, even though our organization is outside. And for us, we're an organization that we work with uh, very high achieving students. Most of the students in our program have you know, mostly A's and B's in college. And we, we do a couple things. First, we, try, we work with them to help them get into colleges that are great fits for them. About, about half of our students in our most recent class went to Ivy League colleges and Stanford and MIT and, and those types of schools. But more importantly, we've been doing this for about 20 years. And our goal is certainly helping you all get to college and helping you graduate from college. But it's, it's about you know, the name of our organization. We want you to thrive in college. We want you to thrive in your career. And what we've learned uh, doing this for about 20 years is the colleges that you're about to go off to, you know, as, as 
Dominique was talking about earlier, they're going to be full of students with opportunities that maybe uh, in, in your schools you're not getting. Uh, and it's our job kind of collectively to make sure that you have those opportunities that you deserve, uh, that your peers are going to be getting in the colleges you're going off, off to. And that's collectively what we're trying to do at Thrive Scholars. That's what we, that we do. And I'll give you a specific example. Um, you know, for our program, you apply as a junior in high school, and then you spend the two summers before college after your junior year, and then again after your senior year. After your junior year, you come to Amherst, Massachusetts for six weeks for an overnight summer academy. And then after your senior year, you come to Los Angeles at USC for six weeks for a second summer academy. And we, we offer three hours of calculus a day, three hours of college writing a day. And that second summer, it's computer science. Really rigorous academic work taught by college professors. And those are opportunities that some of your peers are getting. But when you, we, we learned is when, when students um, like you get these opportunities, you thrive in college. Students in our program actually do better academically than the peers at their schools that they're going to. So you all, when you, when you go into a program like ours, uh, you have absolutely the ability to get to these colleges and do as well as any other person on that campus. And it's our job to make sure you have the opportunities to do that. And uh, that's what we're really excited to be coming to Chicago and working with students in Chicago to provide those opportunities. Thank you. And welcome, by the way. Thank you. Executive Director Braden of Bottom Line. Thank you, Madam Treasurer. And it's a pleasure to be here. And so, so delighted that you included our students in this conversation. I think that's incredibly important as well, as Dominique stated. A uh, bottom line's mission is very similar to those you've heard other, on this call. We partner with students who are the first in their family to pursue college. We help them get in, graduate, and go far in life by pairing them with a full-time trained staff member who works for bottom line and gets trained up on our curriculum that's been designed over the last 25 years. And students work with us from their senior year high school, from that application period, all the way through graduation and successfully into their first job. And I think what differentiates our model uh, from many others, um, we're also a national model, um, serving over 2000 students in Chicago over the last six years, is that we are really focused on this graduation piece and making sure you're getting through. And we stay with students and actually work with them typically on campus in person, one on one throughout that entire college experience. We focus on a slightly different set of colleges. Um, we focus on colleges where the vast majority of students coming out of Chicago public schools are going. So schools that are based in Illinois, typically within two to three hours of the city. And we're serving students from every neighborhood across the city. As Dominique said very well, we believe that talent is equally distributed across the city, but unfortunately the opportunities for students are not, and that a zip code should not define your destiny. And so I'm really delighted to be here and thank you for this opportunity to share a little bit about our program. And let me tell you, as I was listening to the introduction of all three programs, which I think are phenomenal, by the way, um, and I certainly hope those that are listening, if they are not familiar with your programs, that they will become familiar, especially when we hear testimony of the young people that are on the line. And by the way, we will be hearing from young people that are a part of these programs on this evening. But what I think is especially important for me and why I appreciate you the most is because I feel like I was one of those young scholars. A young, you know, when I was born in Inglewood, raised on the West Side by my single mother, I was the first in my family to go to college. And so when I was listening to you all talk about those opportunities, traveling and and, and just being competitive. It, it's not like we can't compete. A lot of times we just were not afforded the opportunity. And so when I think about and hear your programs, I think how important that is because it's the opportunity. And I know you are gonna talk a lot about that, but your program is important because of number one opportunity. So really thank you for that. Um, and then I'll also ask, and I'll kind of start with, um, um, CEO Jordan Turner again, you, you've really spoken about education and you spoke, you've spoken about it being social justice. Can you elaborate on what do you mean by that? Because I think that's very important. Thank you for that question. I, I thought it was really important to highlight that after the, the murder of George Floyd, there's been a lot of activity and engagement on issues surrounding social justice and, and rightfully so. And I have to remind people that at the core of social justice is education. 
I think that systemic change cannot happen until more people of color from marginalized communities are in positions of power to set that policy, right? The people who are setting policy, writing laws, educating our nation, controlling the narrative for people of color, it's important. I was just reading a New York Times article and they listed 922 of the most powerful people in the United States. And it was really interesting, you should find it. Um, it came out in early September. And as you can imagine, um, it did not reflect the level of diversity that exists in our country. Maybe 20% of the people on that most powerful list were people of color. If you were to extract just black people, it would go down to single digits. But those are the people who are setting that policy. Those, that's what we're fighting for. And so what I do know is that the pathway to get to that position of power and leadership starts with education. We know that educated people um, have higher paying jobs, they have healthier families, they vote more, They're, there's so many benefits to a, a, an education. And so what we are doing is just providing that opportunity that we spoke about earlier. And so I do, I, I just like to remind people that yes, education is social justice. It, and the last thing I'll say, share a little bit selfishly is because in the beginning of this pandemic, um, a lot of our funders were pivoting hard right <laughs> and giving money right to, um, to to COVID relief to you know Black Lives Matter movement. All of those things are important. All of those, but what we do also is important. If you want to fight for social justice, you also have to make sure that educational opportunities exist. And that's not something we hear the correlation all the time. So um, wow, very okay. I get it. That was a great correlation and I think was a very important topic to mention. Now, Executive Director Broad, now I'll jump to you next. One of the things that I personally really appreciate about Bottom Line is that you're laser focused on graduation. And what is, what is important, a lot of programs will help you get to college, but it's important that we help and support our youth throughout the college experience on to graduation. So can you talk to us about what kind of support that you provide at Bottom Line to help young people graduate successfully? Absolutely, and uh, absolutely. I'm so glad you asked this question because particularly during these trying and tumultuous times, uh, these supports have become even more essential for our students and you'll hear from one of them in a little bit. Um, but yeah, the, the services that we provide really are, are grounded in this the idea that many of the challenges students face, particularly students who are first in their family to go to college, students of color, there are patterns that we've seen emerge over the last 24 years. And we came up with an acronym that we call our DEAL curriculum that we share with our students that stands for the four big areas where we focus all of our services and where all of our advisors get trained. The D stands for degree, all things academics helping students think about what they want to major in, how to manage their time in this crazy time, how to manage a remote educational environment. A stands, E stands for employability, all things related to career readiness. So not only, you know, the soft skills around um, mock interviews and making sure you have a resume or LinkedIn profile, but also thinking through like, how does that, your vision for your career evolve as you go through college and your long-term career aspirations. A stands for affordability, just as you might guess, all things related to how do you finance your education, not just getting uh, financially to get into college, but having it all the way through college, making uh, difficult choices around how much to work and how much debt to take on. Really making those tough long-term financial decisions because college is, as we know, one of the largest investments anyone will ever make. And L stands for life. It really captures everything else. As we know, many instances can come up for students particularly in this pandemic where life can really create a, a lot of additional challenges. And so our advisors are really trained on providing personalized support, holistic support to students around all areas of life, um, which I could speak to in greater detail if you'd like. Now tell us in the ideal world, right? That, that all sounds great. Tell us right now during the pandemic, did you have to adjust at all? Are you adjusting? Um, we're still in the pandemic, right? So tell us how does that look during the pandemic? Yeah, it's a terrific question. So we pivoted very quickly in mid-March when, when all this erupted. And I think the first thing we did is doing a needs assessment for our students is what do they most need? And some of the things we heard were we need, we need help navigating this new remote learning environment. So we developed some user guides that we've shared with students on what, how to manage your time in a different way in this new environment. 
I think particularly in the life bucket, we heard from students, we have basic needs that are not being met. So we quickly started to deploy emergency funds, some of which we'd already had in place, but we started to raise additional ones. And so we last, last year, we distributed almost $140,000 to students just to meet basic needs around paying for fees at school, basic, basic health needs, food, rent, utilities, things like this. So that's been a huge area of need for our students and something that we've seen come up in a much more uh, dire situation over the last few months. And then I would say uh, for graduates, right? This is one of the most challenging <laughs> environments to ever enter as a graduate of college looking for a job. And so we spent a lot of time thinking about how do we leverage resources to help our recent graduates land that first destination, which we know is critical for their long-term success. And so we're spending a lot of time engaging volunteers and corporations thinking about how can you help us in a virtual environment students network into that first job. Thank you. And I think I'm going to ask you a different question, um, Mr. Stein, CEO Stein. I got a question because I want to talk about representation. And we have some young people that we're going to be hearing from, and we know that representation is extremely important, is what we see. And we certainly know that um, when our young people look at leadership in corporate, civic, and academic institutions, they still don't see an accurate reflection of the world that they live in. How does programs like Thrive Scholars work to change that? Sure, thank you. Um, the good news is that the companies, these institutions, they know it and they want to change it. There's a, a, a big focus in these corporations around how do we have a company that is more representative of our of our city and of our country and you know what our organizations are are trying to do is make sure that our scholars have the opportunities they need before college while they're in college so when they graduate they have the skills they have the knowledge to go and get a job at that company and thrive in that company you know i shared before before we started our summer academy uh, our scholars who were going to these really top schools were having a difficult time finding those jobs, or if they got those jobs, they weren't advancing in those jobs, and they weren't advancing to leadership, and you're not seeing them in leadership of these companies. And so what we learned was there are certain key opportunities that if we as a society and as, a, as an organization provide to youth from under-resourced areas, that they can go and get those jobs and thrive in those jobs. And that's kind of what between our summer academy and like so another example for our program uh, when our students are in college they get an individual career coach for two to three years to help them get the right internship to get right get the right job and when they're in that job and when they're in that internship they have the soft skills they need to be successful they have the hard skills they need to be successful so they get it and they thrive and i think as long as we our organization the other organizations here and, and other organizations in the city think real intelligently about what are those opportunities that kids from the suburbs are getting and kids from other places are getting that our scholars aren't getting, our students aren't getting. And if we provide those same opportunities, that's how we change corporate America and civic America and economic America. Uh, it's, it, and, and you know, for our program, it, it's, we're being successful. I know the other programs in here are also being successful, but the key is opportunity. And what we've learned is when you provide those opportunities, our students outperform students from other areas. And that's, all, that's what we need to do. And that's why I fight even harder because it's opportunity. And so if we level the playing field, our youth will exceed in the expectations. So I really appreciate those answers. And I have one more question and then we're gonna go and hear from our students um, for our second panel. I have one more question from our first panel before we move to our students. Um, CEO Jordan Turner, we know that college is critically important to future success, right? We've been talking about opportunities. How does mentoring help make it more likely, more likely that a young person will graduate from college and be prepared for a career. Opportunities, preparation. Let's talk about it. Absolutely. It makes me you think back to one of the things you were just saying. You, as the first in your family, your, your mom wanted to help, but she just couldn't, right? And so that is the power of a mentor. You don't know what you don't know. And so mentors can help to be your guide. But I want to extract um, that question into two, kind of graduation and career, because we love celebrating our young people when they go off to college. They get that acceptance and we say, yay, you 
made it. And what we don't realize is that 40% of them won't actually persist and graduate, even though they got in and got accepted. And they fall out of that pipeline for a lot of reasons. And if you ask somebody, why do you think students fail? Oftentimes they will think that it's money and academics and all of those things. But one of the things that people don't realize is that lack of community or sense of belonging is a really important piece. So you have to find your people. And so when I think about first generation students, they are there, there's an interesting phenomenon there. And you may, tell me if this re relates, if this resonates with you, is they're stuck in this awkward middle. So they go onto campus and they feel like an imposter. There's a lot of wealth on some of these campuses that you go to and you feel like you snuck in the back door. You feel like, how did I get here? You can't compete. You have all of these um, folks with wealth and you feel perhaps that some of your deficits outweigh your strengths. And then you also, even though your family is really proud of you, there is a disconnect with where you came from because you're changing. You speak different, you like different things, you um, eat different things, and now you feel disconnected from where you came from. And so you're kind of stuck in the middle. And if you don't find your people who are also going through that experience with you, it can be very lonely. And so that is a big part of it. So one of the things that we try and do is connect our young people with peer mentors who are like them, but also adult mentors that will help remind them of that bigger picture of why they started and that also normalize what that feeling is. Because oftentimes you make that decision to go away. It's a hard one, even though you want better, it's a hard one. And you start to feel like maybe you made the wrong choice and you wanna go back. And we know that we can't go back. And so um, mentors play a significant role and the work that we do at Chicago Scholars could not happen without the 300 mentors that we recruit every single year for our scholars. 40%, can you repeat that for us? Yeah, so, and, and most, one of my peers, Chris or Steve, y'all can help me on that. I'm, it's, it's roundabout, but of those who go to college, about 40% of them will drop out. They will not persist to that second and third year. And so, yes, wow. we, we have those trunk parties, we celebrate them, they get there, and, and for a lot of reasons, they fall out of the pipeline. And the last thing that I'll say is that the same thing is, exists for the world of work. You need somebody to guide you, show you the way, find your people, sense of belonging, in order for you to uh, not fall out of that pipeline too. That's amazing. And, and so that leads to my next question because mentorship is important, support is important. And Mr. Mr. Broaden, I want to go to you um, because what about the people out there? And I know people are listening and people will listen later who want to help either by acting as a mentor or by offering an internship, right? We certainly need organizations to partner. Um, they want to offer internships to one of these phenomenal scholars, like I'll, I'll bring up Wellington Management. Um, they are one of the organizations that I know certainly partner with all three of the organizations that we have on the line today. How can new organizations and mentors, how can they get involved? Thank you for raising this. And yeah, it's awesome to see Wellington stepping up and being so uh, as a leader in this work. I think one of the things I've noticed in the last few months, particularly coming out of, of, of George Floyd's death and some of the Black Lives Movement is that there is this real strong, I think, desire. I'm seeing a groundswell of interest from corporations about how can we get more involved? How can we take action and really really live up to the values that we, that we want to aspire? And so I would say that for us, you know, helping even support a virtual internship, or for us, it could be an externship. It's just a week-long experience, providing opportunities for students to get exposed to a world outside of what they've seen before. It's very difficult to see, to be what you can't see. And so I'm sure many folks have heard that before, but I think providing those internships, externships, or for sure, for folks who've graduated college and are looking for that first opportunity to really get involved in providing some networking for those students so they can get a, a broader sense of what's out there, particularly during this very, very difficult time. And to be honest, that's all about one-on-one -on -one relationships, right? So our program is delivered. The core of it is about one-on-one -on -one relationship between an advisor and a student. And our mentors provide that on the career side as well. So I would really encourage anybody who's on uh, this virtual Zoom today to think about just taking on one student and engaging in that mentoring relationship. It can make all the difference. Thank you. And last question, 
and before I move to my youth panel here, Mr. Stein, how can organizations like the three of you that we have here today, how can we get organizations to work together to make sure that no students fall within the cracks? And I know we had a question that came up saying, are you all accepting um, new seniors? Etc. People want to know how their how their youth can get involved, but how can these organizations work together so that no students fall through the cracks? Sure, I'll do my best to answer. You know, I'll note that we're new to Chicago, and I think there's a lot. Actually, I know there's a lot of work going on right now, in which a lot of the organizations are already working together. There's coalition organizations. I think that they're all doing really great work, and we're actually really excited to join that work. Um, but you know, there, there's a couple really easy ways that organizations can work together that I'm sure people are doing now. And one of them is, is what you talked about, um, Madam Treasurer. It's, you know, there are more, unfortunately, there are more students who are interested in programs like ours as we have seats for our programs. And one of the things that we could do when working together is to make sure if students are applying to our programs and maybe they don't get in, is to make sure that they're knowledgeable about other programs that are in, um, in the city that they can be, uh, that they may apply to and could benefit them. So for example, you know, to answer the specific question, students apply to our program as juniors in high school, right? And then uh, it's a long application process and they find out in the spring if they're in, they might not get into our program, but I know there are a lot of programs that accept students as seniors high school um, and so we can then do our best to make sure that students know about what those other programs are and we also you know it's, it's interesting that you mentioned Wellington that you know Wellington is an organization that actually is bringing us to Chicago and I know I think Samala was an intern there and I know supports all three but we can also work together with these companies and corporations that are interested in working with youth instead of kind of working with them in our silos there are so many opportunities for us to work together uh, and that key is what you talked about in the beginning there's 2500 really high achieving youth in Chicago that really want to put in the extra work and want those opportunities and we need to make sure they're working together to make sure that they get them and thank you um, I see CEO Jordan Turner she made a comment in the chat here on zoom um, Obviously, too, we're going to make certain that we provide contact information for each of the three programs that we have on the line because we do want to make certain that you all have access. We also have information um, from Executive Director Broaden from Bottom Line. Um, they are providing information as to how you can apply. So please make certain that you read the notes that they provided to everyone that attended on today. Now, I do have one more question. I, I want our adult panel, not adult panelists, but our program panelists to um, stay close. I got one final question I'm going to come back to you on, but I do want to transition now to bring in our youth panelists. Um, and and a, certainly a quick reminder to those on the line to submit your questions. And as you see, we're trying to answer them as we go along. Um, I would certainly like to welcome our three special guests who can share their first-hand experience as students in these three programs. Joining us today is Samala Cozy, a Chicago scholar. We have Ebony Smith, a Thrive Scholar, and Ashanti Simpkins, a student in the Bottom Line program. I don't know if it was coincidental or on purpose that we have three young ladies that are on the line with us on today. You all know women rock. So <laughs> glad to see them here with us on today. And I'll start with you, um, Samala. Let's start with you. I understand that you're a Kenwood Academy alum a second year intern at Wellington Management, which I'd like to add, I mentioned that, is the only company in Chicago that works with all three of these organizations on the line, which I think is amazing. So Samala, you're currently attending the University of Michigan, and we are so proud of you. Can you tell us about how you got involved in Chicago Scholars? Yes, thank you so much for having me today. And you see, I'm rocking my Michigan gear. I have hey. to everywhere I go. But I will definitely say that I had the luck of the draw when getting involved with Chicago Scholars. It just so happened that a week before the deadline, my sister had a friend who was already in the program that was like, hey, I'm involved in this program and I think it would be good for your sister because they knew I was a rising junior. So they're like, maybe she can get involved as well. 
And my sister came to me and she was like, hey, I heard about this program. I didn't get a chance to do it, but I'm pretty sure it would be a great program for you to get involved in. So that's kind of where that started out. And tell us, how has this program made an impact on you and your experience? How did this program help you to get to where you are today? Yeah, um, honestly, and I will say this with everything, Chicago Scholars, without them, I honestly would not be where I am today. Now, I won't say they did everything for me because uh, obviously you have to do the work yourself, but they definitely got that first step in the door. I didn't know what Michigan was when I was a junior in high school. I had no idea what type of school it was. I didn't know it was a big 10. I had no idea what kind of programs they had. So I was just kind of in this cloud of mystery, like what is college? I didn't start looking early, even though my sister went to college when she, uh, when I was a junior in high school, she had a totally different college search experience. She wanted to go to an HBCU. And because I went to Kenwood, I was like, I kind of want a different scenery. So I looked at totally predominantly white institutions. I wanted that big school feel, but I had no idea where to start looking. And my mom, although I wasn't a first gen, she went to school at home in Chicago, but she was a commuter. So she didn't have that insight to tell me where to start looking. And once I got to Chicago Scholars and they explained all of these programs and like, which is a match and which is a fit and where's the reach schools, they really get you into that academic language to display to you where you can fit in and like where you can go. And once I got into Chicago Scholars, yes, the first year was strenuous and I was stressed and I was like, where am I going to go to school? And on site was stressful. I was like, what if no one wants me? But also like that experience was so great. It was a once in a lifetime experience. And once I got to Michigan, I still was in contact with all of my Chicago Scholars mentors and then came up the Emerge program. And it was a new program, I think in its second year of launching. And I just so happened to open the Chicago Scholars email that day. And I said, hmm, I wonder what, like what is Emerge? And once I found out like this was their internship program, I hopped on that very quickly because in the Michigan atmosphere, like competitive searching for internships is definitely like top tier because you're surrounded by so many smart people and I was trying to get into the business school so I knew that there would be so many other people who had experience on their resumes and I was like where can I get mine and that was like that shining star in the dirt that was just like hey this is me and once I got matched with Wellington and I didn't know I actually didn't know anything about asset management and I had no idea who they were either when I got matched with them so I would definitely say Chicago Scholars was my knight in shining armor to get me to where I am today. Now, I have so much to say after this. Let me just... <laughs> um, first of all, I hope parents that are listening are grabbing their youth because this is such great information that we want to make certain that our youth are listening to because we're talking about Kenwood Academy alum. She's saying, you know what? I wasn't like on top of, oh, looking at colleges early. I wasn't doing this, doing that. She also said, you know, while I wanted to be a part of Chicago Scholars, I had to take initiative, right? Certainly a great program, but it's what I make of it. And so look at where she is. She said, she's like, wait, I'm at a Big Ten University in Michigan. That is amazing. And what I really want to just, I say the icing on the cake for me is when you spoke about you did not, you were not familiar with asset management. The reason I am appreciative of that statement is because before becoming city treasurer, I, I, I knew that the city treasurer obviously is fi financial, it's investments, but really to see a city treasurer is to sit in this seat, not only do investments from my office as city treasurer, but also with pension funds. We're talking about working with asset managers on a daily basis through pension funds, employee pension funds. This is how our employees receive their benefits, annuitants, beneficiaries. And what you're doing in asset management, I say all the time to young people, so I'm going to take this opportunity. 
I want our black and brown youth to know about asset management, Samala. I need them to know about it. Now you're in the midst of it. There is so much money in asset management that it will make your head spin. And guess what? We, we've been talking about opportunity on this call. So many of the young people from the south and west sides of Chicago are not familiar with asset management. If they knew about it, they would be in it. And so I'm just so appreciative, Samala, for your testimony. This is awesome. And I certainly hope that it was encouraging for young people, and certainly I have been encouraged. So thank you. And then I'll go on to Ms. Ebony Smith. Um, I'd love to hear from you next. You graduated this year from Excel Academy Charter High School, and you're now a freshman at Harvard studying government. Y'all, we got some, got some brilliant youth on the line. Chicago is so proud to call you our own. Can you tell us how you became a Thrive Scholar? Thank you so much, Madam Treasurer, for having me. Um, hopefully what I can say is helpful and useful to the youth watching. Um, so yes, like Steve said, Thrive Scholars is a very unique program. We lived on Amherst campus for six weeks. I studied there, I ate there, I slept there, I went on morning jogs there. Um, so yes, that happened um, at the beginning of June. I packed my bags, um, I went to the airport, I cried to my parents and I was like, this is it's time to go. It is time to take control of my future. Um, and at Amherst College, I took a three hour writing class and I took a three hour calculus class. Um, and it very much resembled a college atmosphere. It was my first time getting a glimpse into the college lifestyle. I had office hours, just like every other college student. I had to be on class at time, just like on time, just like every other college student. I had tests, just like every other college students, and I had real grades that I had to keep up there. And it really taught me the importance of time management, and it taught me the importance of balancing my academics with my social time. Sometime I, sometimes I couldn't go into the city with my friends because I had that test on Saturday. Yes, Saturday that I had to study for. Um, and I will say though, that academically I was exposed to so many new things that I thought I had already known in college. For example, this summer I wrote my first research paper with, with Thrive Scholars um, and my professor was Justin Bibler from the University of Southern California. And it was my, I, I, thought, I thought I had written research papers before in high school. Turns out I had no idea what a research paper was. I had never done real research in my life and having a real professor hold my hand through that process without the pressure of failing a class or getting dropped or be, having to drop out out of fear or getting a bad grade that would stay on my record forever. It meant a lot to me because I thought I had known everything. I thought that I, well, I got into this program, so I must, I must already be good. Um, but the truth is you can be great. You can be amazing, but you, you cannot be perfect and you should never strive to be perfect. You should strive to be the best that you can be. And there, um, I learned that lesson at Thrive. Um, and it was, it was a hard lesson to learn, but I learned it. And then in terms of calculus, I took the entire calculus course um, throughout the summer. So when I entered my senior year of high school and was in my AP Calculus AB class, it was the exact same course <laughs> over again. Um, what that meant was that I had already learned everything that my teacher was going to teach me. Um, it gave me room to not only relax in a sense, but it also gave me room to get to know my professor. It gave me more time for the college application process. Um, and it really prepared me for high school and for college. Um, now as a freshman at Harvard, it's very important to know your STEM. It is very important to know your STEM. And even though I'm not taking a calculus class this year, I definitely feel prepared to do so in the future. And Thrive is, it really is an important reason that I attended Harvard. There I um, drafted a college list with my counselor. My college list had 35 colleges on it. And I didn't even, I couldn't, before Thrive Scholars, I could not name 35 colleges off the top of my head. And by the time I left, I had applied to that many colleges. And 
it it meant a lot to me to to show myself that it it, it is something that I was able to do, um, and it also was just a really stark contrast to what I had experienced in high school. I went to a fairly small all high school. It was a charter school and it was based on the lottery system. So it probably had about 700 students in it total. And I still couldn't find enough time with my counselor. My counselor is still busy every week. Um, so I honestly can't imagine how difficult the college application process is for students who go to larger schools. You don't have time to meet with your professor if you're working or if you are doing schoolwork. And sometimes your college counselor doesn't have the amount of time that you need, um, the adequate amount of time, I would say, that you need to really dig into your supplemental essays and your personal statements. So to have that outside third party helping you, um, it was it provided a really great support system for me. And so do you have anything else to add on how Thrive has helped you to be where you are today? I know that you've kind of went over it, but I want to make certain that everyone hears everything. Yes. Um, so I will say that an important part of uh, an important part of Thrive Scholars is not only getting to college, but staying in college and maintaining um, your grades and your um, your presence in college. And through Thrive Scholars, I learned about the important resource centers that all colleges have. I learned how to handle my mental health. I learned where the writing center is. I learned um, where the Office of Career Services is. Um, and now that I'm in college and I need to pay for college, um, I also secured an internship through Thrive Scholars at a law firm called Holland and Knight um, because I do want to be a lawyer and I am studying government. So to have that opportunity through them it felt like I had people looking out for me the same way that I was looking out for myself. Um, and I know I would stay up, <laughs> I would stay up um, all nights in this bed right behind me, um, looking up internships and jobs and to just get a call from my college counselor and from Steve and um, other people in the program saying, we have this really cool opportunity for you. Um, there's this business who really wants to work with a scholar who's interested in government and law and to be a name for them and to be just like at the top of their minds. It, it's a really special feeling. Um, and I'm also getting a lot of financial support here at college because college is expensive. No matter what your financial aid package is, college is expensive. Um, my textbooks are expensive. Expensive. My dorm is expensive. My food um, is sometimes expensive, especially if you want to be able to go out with your friends and have a social life. Um, so Thrive Scholars really helps with that too. At the end of each summer that you attend, you receive a $500 stipend in your junior and senior year. And then every year in college, you receive $1,000 um, to go towards anything you want. And it's really helping me a lot. It helps me with my dorm decorations. It's helping me with transportation. It's helping me with books that I need to read. And it's helping me when I dropped my computer last week on the sidewalk and nobody knew about it because it was fixed <laughs> the next week. Um, and it's really just another support system there for me. Um, and I'm so happy to call myself a Thrive Scholar. Um, I also have a lot of amazing Thrive Scholar um, friends here. So again, you're living on campus with people, correct, in your, um, in your summer academies. So that means that you're surrounded in classrooms with people who may be applying to the same schools as you. So for me, I knew like 10 people who applied to Harvard um, in my summer academy, and five of them are here with me. Some of them live in the dorm next to me. We eat lunch together, we hang out together, we FaceTime together when my government professor assigns a lot of reading. And it's just really important to have those relationships that last four years because of the bond that Thrive Scholars allowed us to have. So if you're looking for um, a community, exactly. It's a built-in community. If you're looking for a community, if you're looking for um, the financial support on your way to college and in college, and if you're looking for the academic mentorship that you're going to receive um, from this program, I would definitely recommend applying to Thrive Scholars. It changed my life. Wow. Uh, <laughs> and so um, I looked at a comment that CEO um, Turner had mentioned, she said, and you said this, Ebony, you said, um, 
strive to be the best you can be, not perfect, right? Sometimes, you know, we are so hard on ourselves. While we want to be the best that we can be, we have to acknowledge and understand and appreciate that we're not perfect. But it was a few things that you said that I think is worth is reiterating. Number one, you spoke about your you being prepared your preparedness. I think that that's very important because we want to talk about opportunities and leveling leveling the playing field. We as youth have to be prepared. And so I can appreciate um, you mentioning that. And then also, as you say, you know, when you're in high school, going off to college, you know, the counselors are there, but they are so busy. They got everything going on and, and a lot of students pulling at them. And to have that third party, the scholars program, able to be that support system for you and not to mention financial aid assistance, wow. You know, so it, it's just, I, I think that it's a win-win, but I think that it was important for our parents, our youth to hear that one today because these are opportunities when I'm listening to you all talk I mean, you're unstoppable. You have been positioned to be great. That's what it's all about, right? You have been positioned to be great. And so we are certainly excited about that and looking for great things. Now, Miss Ashanti Simpkins, you're an urban public policy fellow at the University of Illinois at Chicago, where you're double majoring in political science and psychology, and you're a part of the bottom line program. Now, um, I'm going to be bragging on all three of you for days. You already know that, right? Um, but how did you get involved in the bottom line? And talk to us about that in your experience, Ms. Simpkins. Yeah, so uh, first I would just like to say thank you so much for this opportunity. I really appreciate panels like this. Um, you know, just being able to share my experience with everyone has been, uh, I'm really appreciative for it. So um, I got involved with Bottom Line the summer before my freshman year of college, um, which is a little bit different from everyone else's experience. Uh, I already knew that I was going to go to UIC before um, I got involved with the program. And so when I was a high school senior, uh, I applied and was accepted and I was paired with an advisor. And we were able to do an in camp, uh, on campus, in person meeting uh, the first uh, month of the semester in August. Uh, being a part of the program, I've been in it for like four years now, I believe, from freshman to senior year. Um, and as a first generation college student, I found the program to be extremely helpful uh, in helping me navigate my way through college, um, not only my academic career, but also life after college, um, which is something I've never really thought about. I knew that I wanted to go to college and I knew that I wanted to become an attorney, but like that was it. Um, I just thought, you know, after I graduate, I'm just gonna come home and figure it all out. But through bottom line, I've been able to make actual concrete plans and uh, steps on my way to law school. Um, as you mentioned earlier, I am an urban, po urban public policy fellow at UIC and I was able to pursue the opportunity with my bottom line advisor. Um, during the on-campus meetings with my advisor every semester, we've really been able to build a solid relationship where I feel like I can trust my advisor and I know that my advisor has my best interest at heart. So whenever there's an opportunity that I'm interested in or I need help with like my resume, my personal statement, or just wondering, you know, how can I balance my school and work life and things like that, I always make sure I meet with my advisor because I know that my advisor is going to give me the best possible advice because she truly does have my interest at heart. I said, I love it without unmuting. I love it. Um, and, and talk to us about how, and you, you've said you've been a part of the program for four years? Yes, yes, four years. Talk to us about how that has helped you get to where you are today. Yes, yeah, so um, as a first-generation person, like I said before, um, I had a lot of support from my parents. But, you know, like we kind of talked about earlier, it's really difficult for your parents if they've never been, you know, to college before to really give you that advice that you need when you're going to pursue a higher education. Um, and it can seem like a scary experience, especially, you know, if you have no one to really ask for that advice. So being a part of Bottom Line has truly helped me um, have a go-to person, really. Um, a lot of times our advisors, our college advisors are swarmed with students on a daily basis. And it might be a little hard to build a close personal relationship with them just because they're, you know, advising so many students on campus. But through Bottom Line, um, I believe my advisor only you know, advises only about like five students per semester. So, you know, it really gives me the opportunity to build that relationship. 
And I've also had the same advisor for about three years now. So, you know, we've been going strong and uh, she knows me really well. I know her really well. And when opportunities arise that she knows that I'll be interested in, she, you know, shoots me text messages, emails, and just gives me a heads up and, you know, just to keep me focused. And uh, really looking out for me is, is the main thing that Bottom Line has done for me. And I think that you're a great example of speaking about sustainability and making certain that we help you to get to college, but that we help you graduate, right? We don't want any of our students to be a part. We don't, that 40% number needs, ha, has to d diminish, right? It has to be eliminated. And so certainly programs such as these are programs here to provide support. So I think that's a great perspective. You provided, Ms. Simpkins, in speaking about four years of being a part of the program and the support support that has been provided. Now, for those that are listening, we got two final questions. I know this is awesome, right? So awesome. We got two final questions. My first question is to our youth panelists, and my second question will be to our um, first panelists. All right, now, my first question um, to the youth panelists, um, and, and certainly I have been so impressed on this evening. I'd love for you to imagine that you're talking to, you're talking to a high schooler out there perhaps on the south or west side, someone who is a lot like you and that they have big dreams for their future, but don't feel like they have the resources to make those dreams come true. What would you say to them? What's your advice on a concrete action that they can take? Ms. Smith, let's start with you, then Samala, then Ashanti. Great, so I think to answer this question, I would like to refer to something that Ms. Turner said earlier about the, the point of wealth. You, you can get to these colleges and sometimes you feel um, surrounded by wealth that you don't have. And I felt that in high school for sure. I do identify as a first generation low income student. Um, and I wish someone had told me this, um, that wealth is not just money. Wealth can be support systems, wealth can be education, wealth can be academic resources. And although currently I can't say that I came from a particularly wealthy family in the sense that we use the word, I can say that I am wealthy in academic resources. I am wealthy in support systems. I am wealthy um, because of Thrive Scholars. Um, and I think that's something that I wish someone had told me uh, because it could definitely help you eradicate all of those feelings that you get during the application process and even when you're in college you you feel like an imposter and you feel like you just don't you you can walk outside and not see people who look like you that does not mean that you don't belong there and i definitely encourage whoever is listening if you are applying to college do not not apply to a college because you feel like you don't belong or you feel like people won't like you um there are groups there at college for you resources exist you just have to do the work to find them i promise you that they exist um, and it's very important to be wealthy in other ways if you can't be wealthy um, in money yeah and i would like to kind of echo that in a different sense i would say that definitely finding those resources is so important because even though we may not think they're out there, like I didn't know Chicago scholars existed until the week before my application was due. And just going into the offices or going to a teacher or my school had a college lab or some sort of resource in your environment that you may not know has these connections, you just have to go in there and ask that one question. So just making yourself vulnerable for that one moment to say, I want to better my experience in life. I want to further my education and I have these dreams for myself. As asking that one question may be your ticket into that life that you want. And I also want to echo, echo that power of mentorship. I've had mentors since starting in Chicago Scholars up until I went to college and also in my internships for the past two years in Wellington. And I can definitely see that mentorship has changed my life like for the better a thousand, thousand, thousand times. And again, because having those people there to tell you that you can do it 
or you have the ability to do whatever you want. You just have to try. And a lot of us at this age are like, I don't know if I can do it. And because they think they can't, they won't. And that is that one thing that is telling them like, that's their future stopper and that's not the case. So finding a friend of the same age, a friend, a sibling, a teacher, a counselor, someone that you can talk to that can give you that motivation to take that next step because it's there. You just don't know it's there. Yeah, I would just um, add that the biggest advice I can give is to really ask for help. Um, college can seem like a very isolated experience and very scary, especially if you're a first generation student like myself and going on to a huge campus where you're just overwhelmed with the like the number of buildings and like the classes you're taking and things like that. So really ask for help and um, seek out resources that you feel like are actually trying to help you as well. Um, so I would just like to say like, if you seek out mentors, um, make sure they're really good mentors and really good advisors that actually have your best interests at heart. You know, um, you don't have to, you know, get 10 advisors, 10 mentors. If you have two really good ones, that's, that's awesome. And um, really just drive, I really want to just drive home the point that anyone can, you know, really find success in college. It's just about advocating for yourself and um, knowing that you can do it. So before you, you know, want to drop out or not return for a semester, take a look around your campus and find some resources and reach out to people because I guarantee you there's other people on campus, campus that are just like you. And um, once you find those resources, you'll be able to push through. So let me just personally thank our three youth that joined us on today. I'm, I'm just in awe because I'm listening, right? I mean, three different perspectives, um, three youth at three different schools. I'll tell you, being born in Inglewood, raised on the West Side, I would have never thought I would be at Harvard. I would never think that I would be at a Big Ten, right? Would never think that I would be double majoring at UIC. I mean, this is like incredible, but it's possible. And so the reason that we do this is because we want our young people to know, especially black and brown, that it's possible. And when I look at these three beautiful young ladies that are on the line on today, this is so encouraging. And I'll tell you, it's not just encouraging for the young people, me being the mother of a small child now, it's encouraging for me. I have a young daughter that is like literally playing on the floor right now by my feet that I know she's listening, right? She may not hear everything that you're saying, but she's listening. And so I just appreciate that. And I have to bring back our first panel because I know that they are like an ah. And this, this is like a pat on the back for them. I mean, you all, this program that you all have is, is just amazing. And everyone is so impressed on the line on today. And so I really thank you for what you are doing for our young people. And our final question for today, I am going to throw back to our first panel, our programs that we have on the line. Um, and, and, and you all, I just really thank you for what you do. But if there are young people out there or parents that are watching um, who feel like one of these programs is the perfect program for them or their child, how can they get involved? And then if there's anything else that you want to add as we um, end, this will be your moment. Um, let's start with you, CEO Jordan, um, Jordan Turner. Thank you. So I am, like you, I have an 11-year-old doing homework in the other room, and she's overhearing this conversation. So I just want to thank you all. I feel like a proud mom right now. Um, so our applications um, to join the next class open in November um, to juniors. You go to our website, click to apply, um, click to join our mailing list so that you can be notified. And so um, I was sharing in the chat earlier that everyone was asking about senior year. Senior year is too late. And I, I sadly have to tell so many parents that, you know, they're like, I have a senior, well, they've got to get to college. You have to start thinking about that so much earlier. So if you take nothing else, start getting connected to these programs, even if it's too early, rather be too early than too late. Um, and then, you know, I want to just echo something that Chris mentioned that since George Floyd's death, there's been a groundswell of interest of people who want to do something, right? Who want to move beyond performative allyship of just simply saying Black Lives Matter 
matter to doing something. Well, I think all three of these organizations are great opportunities to do something. We are always looking for mentors, for volunteers, for career and community partners to provide those internships. You see that these young people are prepared and all they need is that opportunity to demonstrate that competence that will change their lives, their communities, their families. And so I just am just in awe to do this work in support of young people like you. Thank you for having me. Thank you, uh, CEO Stein of Thrive Scholars. I just want to once again thank everybody for the warm welcome. We're so excited to be coming to Chicago. Um, you know, if you're a student out there, like uh, you know, um, Dominique said, uh, our application is open to juniors as well. Our first experience in our program is after that junior year of high school before senior year. Our application is either open or just about open. You can go to our website right now, thrivescholars.org, click on apply. There's something you can fill out. Uh, our application itself is due in December. Um, and so I encourage you to do that. Uh, and then, you know, also, you know, uh, we are, we're coming to Chicago, we are going to be looking for mentors, we're going to be looking for corporate partners, uh, we're going to be looking for folks to be involved in a lot of different ways. So if the uh, organization is of interest of you, please reach out, uh, go to our website, contact us. Uh, we're very much looking forward to becoming part of the city uh, and working with such unbelievable youth as the three we have right here. It's just inspiring. Thank you. Thank you, Executive Director Broden with Bottom Line. Yeah, I don't have a ton much more to add, except that um, our high school access program is just wrapping up now. So there's about a week left. So for those of you who are seniors, there is, there is still hope. There is some opportunity with us, but there are so many great programs out there. But I just want to say, like, even if it's not one of our three, there are literally dozens of amazing programs in Chicago. Please reach out to us. My email is just chris at bottomline.org. Happy to connect you with our team. On the college side, as Ashanti said, we have an application that opens in the spring if you're going to one of our 12 target colleges please check out our website, www.bottomline.org. Just uh, and click on our programs, you can learn more there. And I guess I would say the final thing that, that Steve said is if you are a corporation, you're an individual, you're someone who wants to get in and do something and take action, I just encourage you to, uh, to reflect on the words of these three amazing young women and think about one thing you can do in the next week to, to help improve our city and provide more opportunity for students because there are so many ways to get involved and all it takes is that first step. So just like Ashanti said, say, don't be afraid to ask for help. I'd say, don't be afraid to just dive in and do something. Great. And I know that we provided contact information for all three programs, but I'll also um, thank you, CEO Jordan Turner. I see on the Zoom chat, you mentioned the social media handle. I assume all three programs are on social media, correct? All right. Yeah, yeah, if you're going to serve as young people, you got to definitely be on social media. So um, we always talk about websites and emails, but we certainly could talk about social media as well. So thank you for that. Well, that certainly concludes our program on today. Um, I feel like Chicago's future is in great hands and we need to be reminded of that sometimes because there's so much negativity sometimes that we hear that we need to hear that our young people, we have great great young people in the city of Chicago. And certainly these three young ladies that we had on the line today are perfect examples. Ebony, Ashanti, Samala, thank you for your dedication and support and things that you have been doing to help these organizations like Thrive Scholars, Chicago Scholars, and Bottom Line. All these young people have this kind of potential that we really just need to unlock. So thank you everyone for tuning in to Money Mondays with Melissa. We do this all the time by the way. Um, you can certainly follow us through our website at chicagocitytreasurer.com um, as well as, it, on, let me mention this before I go to our social media, at, at chicagocitytreasurer.com you can actually sign up to receive email notifications from us because we can let you know all the events that we're doing and, and certainly events such as this. Also, we're on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, so you can certainly find us out there. Um, I dare not get off this line without making certain that I announce that we are in the midst of Hispanic Heritage Month 
and the city treasurer's office, I am so happy to be partnering with BMO Harris Bank for our Hispanic Heritage Month essay contest, where we're offering two scholarships to two CPS seniors. So please make certain that you follow us through our website or social media. The deadline to apply is October 15th. I don't want anyone to listen and think it does not apply to them. It does apply to you. It includes all CPS seniors. I'll say this to our youth. I know that you all are away at school and here at school. Uh, please make certain that you continue to be great. I am encouraged. I just, I am thrilled about your future. I look forward to knowing that I, to be able to say that I met you and I'll say, yeah, I remember her. We were on the panel together. So keep up the great work and please stay safe. Please stay safe because we certainly want, we want to all come out of this pandemic and want to say that we made it and we are even better. So thank you for that. And um, thank you again for joining us this afternoon. This concludes today's webinar. Thank you all for attending. You may now disconnect.